Okay, we're going to base cut the bird and um, learn about a little bit about wildlife colors and how to mix those. This is part two. We've done the leaves, the pears, and the stems, and now we're ready to do the little black and white chickadee. Now, anytime you're working with wildlife, you never want to use straight black from the bottle or um, straight white. So I always work with light buttermilk and I mix a black. Now this bird is a little black and white chickadee and I am going to warm up the black with burn umber. If I were working with a jet black bird that you see out in the yard that has blue cast and purple cast to it, then I add another color to it, which is Prussian blue. But we don't want to get confused with that. So first of all, we're going to mix our animal black. And I usually keep a bottle full of it. When my black gets down, I'll add burn umber to it and shake it up, and I mark it animal black. And that way I don't have to keep mixing it. But to mix it, you're going to use two parts, bar number, over to your black. And this is lamp black. And all we're doing is basically warming that color up. We don't want it to be a harsh black. So I want it to be a warm black. And um, this is very important for you to learn to mix it. Don't go into class and take your, not have a palette knife. Your stir, your, people come in that with the brush and they stir their paint. You want to mash those pigments together like you were mashing potatoes. And I'm wiping the excess off, cleaning it off on a paper towel, and then I can test this color. If I get too much brown in it and I come over to white, I'm going to get a chocolatey color. But I want just a pretty gray color. So I'm going to take a little bit more, put it over. You always carry your dark colors to your light colors. And that is a pretty gray. If you get a chocolate color, that means you had too much burn number. So you would have to add more, guess what, black. And I know you all know that. So now I've got a gray color. I've got light buttermilk out. And I've got my animal black is what I call it, or warm black. Wiping the brush off, I'm through with that for now. Now I'm going back to that chisel blender. Wet it in water because I cleaned it out on some soap. So I'm going to rinse the soap out. That's all you have to do. Wipe out. Now we may have to do this in two parts. But uh, right now we're working and go as fast as we can. So we're going to do the black areas. Now, if I look at this bird... The black is back in here on his back, and it's going to chisel in. We've talked about the chisel edge of the black, and it's going to come down and around. And that would be our part one and part two. Now, if I keep the water out of my brush like we've talked about, I'm going to get a lot of good pigment, which means I don't have to give it two coats of this. And remember, in his tail is going to grow back under that big pear. So, I'm going to start down his back with the black mix. And it's a little watery. And by the way, I meant to tell you, I took this uh, palette paper from my Stay Wet palette. And I take it to the kitchen sink, which probably I should not do. But I'll probably be long gone before they figure it out. 
I and I uh, rinsed it off and kept it really clean. Now, what I'm after you to see is that chisel edge chiseling into what's going to be his breast area. And we got about 15 minutes on this little video. Then we're going to come across right under his neck. I'm chiseling up, chiseling down. And as I come, I got to think, oh, there's his tail under there. So I kind of want to straighten out. Chisel up and down into the V area. And make it kind of, I mean, you don't want him to look like he put his finger in a socket and his hair is all standing up or been moose to stand straight up. And this comes just a little bit into his beak, so I'm chiseling there. And then around here at his breast. And you want small little edges. You don't want it to be like um, sparse. I don't know if that's the word sparse, but anyway. If I was trying to tell you that, this is what I would want to tell you. You don't want it to come down like this. You want it to be more solid. And it's a quick little motion. It comes down his back and back up in. But not this um, spread out stuff. You want them to be close and quick up into the neck, up into his beak. Now in here, you can just paint it. You don't have to chisel that. But I wanted you to see how I'm chiseling. And then this is just painted right down his back, right over that leaf. He's going to be a fat little feller. But I love my birds to be fat and happy. Okay. Now that's what I want you to see there. Now then from there, we're going to go directly up and do the top of his head. And I want you to see this closely. This is very important. I want it to turn as it comes around. Where it doesn't look like it's straight up again. But following the and comes right to the beak. Up. I turn my painting. I'm a lap painter. I love to put things on my lap and paint them. But then I get this. And then I'm going to chisel back a little bit. And this is going to come right across the top of his eye. So I'm just painting this. But what happens when I get to the beak? Turn that chisel edge. I'm barely touching. I use very little paint to make it go a long way. Picking up a little more paint. Comes across the top of the eye and back in and around. Oops, so we'll just smooth that out and let it drop down and kind of look like it just came to a sudden end. Now, that is his little black head, his little black chest, the back of him. Chiseling back into the belly and chest area. And we'll add a lot more colors, but right now you're basing him in with color. Rinse the brush out. Dry it good. Normally I take it and squeeze it good because that's how much paint pigment I want. And I'm going into light buttermilk. His whole chest, right above the pear, is filled in with light buttermilk. This size brush I'm using is a 10. And um, I love that size. 
Then what am I going to do? Turn that chisel edge so that I can make that little fella furry. And around the pair, you're just going to get in behind it. Don't leave a line. I can wipe some off. I got too much. Come around there. And then smooth it out. Brushing over. You're looking at the front side of it. What happens here? You're going to chisel in. Chisel into the black. You do not want any separated lines. You want it to be a quick little motion. And just keep softly doing it. And then you can brush here just like you would. You remember the flat surface of your brush? That's all you'd be using there. It's just a flat surface. You would not want to be chiseling any stomach. But only where the hair comes into each other. I'm coming here. And back up. Up into that little V area. And down. And there's his little belly. And then I'm going to look at that and think, hmm, I probably need a second coat. But I want this to be kind of smooth. So you see how you fur it up into here. Or chisel edged up into there. You can always go back and do it. And pull it where you want it. This is your bird. I'm just showing you how I do them. And you've all got to think of yourself as the greatest artist, and you can do it. We all look at all the art people and think, why can't I do it? Well, that's not who we are. We're who we are. And God made us the way we are. All right, here's the little cheek area. I'm going to start, chisel edge, come into there. What am I doing? Chiseling into the black. And I want him to look furry. So I'm just going to pull a little bit there. Then we get into this little area. And we've got a chisel into the black. And I want you just to keep a complete little tiny circle. Where you'll know where his eye is. And that's coming down like I want it, chiseling into the beak like I want it, little eye area where I'll know where it is, and it's already looking soft. Now, we're going to do real quick, before our time runs out, which is going to about any second, the beak. Now I'm going to pick up a smaller brush for the beak. And this is probably a number two or four. So I'm going into the black mix. And the base in the bottom area first. Chisel into that white because that grows over. And then the top area. Chisel in. And this is, we're going to make this real easy. His nose will turn up a little. That makes him happy. Whoops, not that far. Then I'm going to wipe that out. And you remember I talked about the corner load of your brush, which is just on the corner? I'm going to go into that little tiny bit of gray. And I'm just going to highlight while that is still wet, blend on your palette and lighten the top of that beak where we'll know exactly where he's going to be. Right along here and back. And if you want to put a touch on the bottom, you can. Now I'm going to turn it back. He looks like a drunk driver. 
So I'm going to come back into the black and straighten out this beak a little. I don't want it to grow and be that pointed. But I want to be able to separate the top. We'll get more separation when we um, start our lights and dark values. There it comes. Just so you can see where that comes right along there. His beaks are growing. Bless his heart. So then we're going to take a little bit of burnt umber, I mean black. I'm going to come back under here because you can always fix things. And don't ever forget that. Don't get frustrated.